Greetings friends. Today we're going to deal uh, with an issue that is often taken for granted, but nothing further away from the truth. In this chapter, we're going to talk about how the Nazca lines were created. Uh, despite what is often said in documentaries, the only truth is that the data that they mostly offer comes from an absolute lack of knowledge. The reasons for this could be the lack of a well-detailed and deep study prior to mass divulgation. Enterprises that simply feed off the earnings from those documentaries. They merely bring you what others have already said without really thinking that what has been said has been but little. Short-term studies with rushed conclusions, ambitious investigations that lack, however, uh, a global perspective on the matter, or even theories that have no academical value, uh, maybe because they lack scientific evidence, maybe because they have no methodology that we can reproduce ourselves, or maybe just because uh, they just offer no article or anything to back it up. Those are what these channels from bigger enterprises feed from which uh, is merely an attempt to entertain the general public and care but really little about the quality of the information that they're bringing. But what's the point of looking for the truth if you can just have a good time sunk in your couch after a long and exhausting day of work? One can understand, but in spite of all this, truth always sprouts eventually. It sprouts through the mud of sensationalism and the craziest fantasies. And believe me, Despite it being quite boring and homely to hear the truth sometimes, that truth might be the one that saves the world yet. And no, we're not boasting here. We shall deal with this in future videos of this topic. Uh, as the lines of Nazca, Nazca lines are by quite some margin, more than just merely a few lines in the desert. But we ask you for patience, as we must take on a journey first, a journey that will take us to what these lines really were, to who made them, and when, and how do they work, and all this so we can eventually understand what their real purpose was, and how they could possibly save millions of lives in the future. The truth is also exhilarating, as you can see, it doesn't have to be boring just because it's the truth. And this one exists, it exists in our world, and so it does affect us. But without further ado, let us begin as the way that the Nazca lines were created was also quite real. Plenty of things have been said, be it alien spaceships aiming their lasers at the desert, uh, sophisticated machines crossing the plains, or possibly ancient magicians wielding their mana. Fantasies that came from writers that just hoped to earn money out of our fantasies and hopes. But what you will see. After 10 years of investigation, our international and interdisciplinary team got to meet these lines more closely. They tested numerous theories and soon came to the realization that the most boring of them, the one that one could simply find in Wikipedia and that many archaeologists shared, was the most likely one. The truth is that in the academic world, things are hardly ever said just for the sake of saying them. The truth is that sticks, stones, ropes and gallons of sweat were the tools used once upon a time by those who created this fantastic labyrinth of lines, structures and geoglyphs. There were two types of materials that were used, uh, the first one being the darker colored material that is near the surface and then a more lightly colored clay-like material that would be put on the insides. The darker material is put aside near the edges of the lines and the lighter material is uncovered so it can create some contrast. Simple as that. But is that so? Well, no, absolutely not. That's what was believed, but the truth is that the hard work carried out by this unyielding Nazca goes way beyond that. In the second part of this chapter, we will address uh, the results of more than nine years of investigation about what we see and what we fail to see in the Nazca lines. And believe me, it will astonish you to learn what we have found about the way that they were made and what they looked back in the day. Those moments in which the lines of Nazca were drawn, built and underwent daily maintenance. Now, we hope to meet you in the second part of the video about how the Nazca lines were made. 
Smash that like button if you've liked the video, subscribe if you please, and don't forget to hit the bell so you don't miss any of the next episodes, each of which will take you closer and closer to the answer of the biggest question of them all. What are the Nazca Lines? This is Alberto Escudero, representing our chairman, Carlos Enrique Armida, and this has been Salvar Nazca. Until the next time. Solo en YouTube.